Right, what I've got is a piece of wood that I want to set or copy or carve a model right here. The reason I want to do that is I think this little knot, if you would, or outgrowth of wood looks like a moon. So I want to put a Garden of Gethsemane carving right here, and I want to set it right here. So the first thing you do is you take a picture of this and you use, you use a very plain background. Then you import that picture as a JPEG into your VCarve Pro, and that's the next step. But that's what I have in mind. I'm taking this slab because I think that looks like a moon. So I'm gonna put a carving here and the Garden of Gethsemane is a night picture because Christ prays at night in the Garden of Gethsemane. So it's setting here under the moon. So let me see how I do. Next, on to the import. First thing we're going to do is create a new file for this. And I measured the piece of wood. And it is 3.6 wide and 6.5 and tall. So that's where our object is going to fit. Next, we're going to import. Sit right here, import bitmap. So we're going to look at. Sometimes when you plug them in, they don't simply don't work. Moon walnut. That's it. It's a JPEG file. And it fits in there. Now the problem is that I want it to reach from here to here, so I have to stretch that file. And I don't have to do it in this form. I can create the vectors around it and then do it. So if you look at this tool, trace bitmap, let's see how it does. Just say preview. Problem is, um, let's just do the one color. That doesn't look very good. Often I ended up, instead of doing the bitmap, so I can never get it to work the way I wanted to. I just simply run around it. So let me give you an example. When I come here, it takes longer to get rid of all the garbage down in here than it does simply to draw the line. Um, let me show you what I mean. If I go over here under my layers, and I turn off the one underneath, which is your bitmap layer. See it right there? I turn that off. See, there's my line right in here. Well, that's the, that's the line of the bark. I want the line of the wood. See it? And down here is the line of the wood, but there's a bunch of shadows and gaps. And see all these pixels right in here you have to get rid of and, and a broken line? So a lot of times it's easier to make this fit. A lot of times it's easier just to draw it than it is to import it, especially when you have so much interference going on. So how do we get rid of all this? Well, you can select it like this and hit delete and it's all gone it gets you back to a clean slate to make sure you can go edit select all selection select all vectors and that's any bits left out there and then you hit again hit delete so let's turn our bitmap back on and what we will do is go back to our drawing tools you see this one right here, the S shape one, draw curve. I found that one works the best. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in right here, start, and just start drawing lines. And again, it, keep in mind, it does not have to be exact. This one curves in, that one curves out. Reach up here, pull this down. It's pretty wood. It's over here. See it? Zoom out a little bit. 
Yeah, so I should probably go there. It's a nice long straight one there. Nice straight here. Keep in mind my edge doesn't have to be exact. There's a little kind of identifying blip right there. Uh, that's why I didn't pick up this edge down here. It's washed out. We know what it looks like. And right in here, that was some bark that was left on there. That's why it looks funky at the bottom. Right there. To here. To here. Go back out. I'm just turning my scroll wheel to zoom out. Okay. In case you're wondering how I did that, go back up. We got a little, uh oh, got a blip right there. See it? And I can, I'll edit that out. I won't change it now. I'll show you how to edit that if you somehow do like I did. Get an extra click in there when you weren't really planning on it. Let's go up. Curves out here. It's curving back. Why oh, it's so jumpy this morning, but it is. I really need a mouse pad, but when you're doing this kind of work, you can use a nice mouse pad. I just have it on a tabletop, so it makes it jump sometimes. There we go. And we want to join these two. And hit the space bar, and that ends it. Okay. Now I click on. Whoops! I've still got that activated. So I hit Escape, get out of the tool, select this. Okay. And it edit join vectors, and hit close. So that way it's all one vector. Remember we had one down in here someplace that was jumping out. Right in there, see it? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my node editing tool. And see I can come into this and move it back out. It's not really going to hurt anything where it is, but you know, I'm going to put it closer to where it's supposed to be. And when it made that, See, it pushed all this stuff out. I'm going to pull that back over too. And I don't know why it pushed all that out, but I can click right here and add a point. See it? should say insert point. And then I can get that point and drag it back over to the line. And see, that straightens it out a little bit. Uh, look at that down there. There's another one that's off in left field. Maybe this is my original point that I was looking for. Okay, there we go. So that's not too bad. So it's a whole lot better than the mess we had before. And there's a lot less points to deal with. So now we'll go back in and turn off that bitmap layer like this. Go back to our drawing tools. Go back to our non-edit selection tool. Now this is selected. So now we're going to look at the width. Remember I told you the width was 3.6. 
and that should make it so that it fits inside that box see it well you say well, it doesn't quite fit well this you look at it it's over on one side so let's center it there we go if you notice down here at the bottom it's right at the edge the sides are matched and the height is matched so that tells me that I did pretty good now we have to import our 3d model um, let's do a files open a previous carving uh, I think it's this one it's got the image that we want on it so rather than go through our library and yes I want to save this otherwise you lose it all and we'll call this the moon garden save because this is a one-off you don't often get um, a lot of really neat stuff on it like this has so <clears throat> it's saving that one and I want this file or model right here so I'm gonna simply click on it and hit copy go back and open the other one moon garden and hit paste It should be here someplace. Let's look, zoom out and see where it is. Oh, goodness. It's all the way up there. Well, let's select it. Let's check the size first. It's four inches wide, and we know that down there is three and a half. So let's do uh, a three inch. That'll give us two and a half on each side. And close it for now, and then bring it down. All right, now let's zoom it. Zoom selected instead of zoom on. Now this is going to push it to the side. The moon's up here. I think I think I want that centered a little bit. So we use our centering tools and just center it this way. Now that looks pretty good because it's going to have a base down here. The moon's going to be up here. And the way the board is cut, there's kind of a ray that comes down you remember so let's turn the other one back on and see what it looks like okay this one isn't big enough let's see if I can modify that stretch it that handle right there should be able to stretch this see if that fits better almost there stretch it a little bit more that looks pretty close now I gotta go this way with it to the right I'm just using my keyboard to do that all right so then I'll click over here and that's the way it's going to turn out and see that little almost like sunbeam coming down that's a saw mark so when I send it I'm going to be careful to leave it um, and that's the rest of the log so that's the way it's going to look so the moon's up here coming down so that's the way I'm going to do it um, I'll machine that and then I'll show you a picture of what it looks like once it's done of course I've got a mounting issue how do I mount this and I'm also going to take the, this bark off so because this bark here fell off when it was cut so I'll just uh, strip this so before I strip it because that's pretty tight I'm gonna actually screw into this here and here to hold this in place and then uh, I'll, because you see how this hangs over I'll bring a board across like this and catch the end of this to hold that in place and then I'll machine this and we'll go from there so now we go to our tools we click on this I think I'm going to use a one millimeter bit so this is the very 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 tiny bit that's there this is a hardwood so I could do that I've got a new bit uh, for that so let me try that um, before I do I want to check my model depth and that's something I've been trying to push this is a one inch slab <clears throat> excuse me 
So I'm going to check my model height and see what it is. It's 0.3. This actually looks better when it goes to about 0.4. So I'm going to set it at 0.42 and apply. Close this. And then we'll look at it, see what it looks like. Oops. Got to go back to my tools. Close this. Back to my drawing tools over there. And over here, I'm going to go back to this tool. And I haven't created a toolpath yet. So I'll have to go back to this tool, create my toolpath. And slow it down so we can see where the, what, how it moves across the part. Okay, so it's 90 degrees. If you notice, this doesn't model the actual vector part we drew before. And it's not supposed to. This only represents the square pieces, basically even though the pieces we have are not square. We're going to find the center of that slab. That's the way this is let, set up so it's a center. So I'll measure the center for three and a half and then I'll measure for six and a half, put an X there and that's where my start point will be. So it'll start there, carve this, and then I will pull it out and finish sanding it. I just want to see if I'm too deep. It's a little exaggerated here in the shoulders, I think, versus the head size. So I'm going to change this down a little bit. Because it's so small, I think the 0.4 is a little too deep. So I'll close that, go back to our, <coughs> excuse me, modeling layer. Go back here, still selected, and look at our height. See, it was 4.2. We're going to change that, make it uh, 0.32. Close. Close. Double click on this. Recalculate it. Preview it. And I'll speed this up so it doesn't take long. Uh, I didn't do a reset, did I? Preview all tool paths. No. You look, it's not quite as exaggerated in here. It's one tenth less. So that looks alright. I think that'll give me the detail I want. And keep in mind, it doesn't show the moon up here, if you will. So. Well, that's it. That's how you do it. I'm going to go out and machine it, mount it, machine it. I'll take a picture of how it's mounted once it's done so you get a better idea. And take care. Have fun with your CNC. And if you notice back here in the 2D, my zero line is right there and here. So those are my zero lines. You turn off the <coughs> excuse me, bitmap layer the piece of wood goes out of the way and you can see right there are my zero lines all right so i'm going to measure in this way three and a half from there to there so i'll split that find that line come down here this is six and a half so i'm going to split this at three and a quarter so i mark up three and a quarter from or down three and a quarter from there and in find that x that's where my bit will start. It'll come down here and start machining. So, all right. Have a great day and have fun with your CNC. This is what it looks like. Um, it's all set to go. The center is right there. This is three and a half, so it's an inch and three quarters. This is six and a half, if you remember, so it's up three and a quarter from the bottom. Um, that's it. Ready to go. It's wedged. What This press is down here and then here so this is wedged in place you can't move it so these are locking blocks on the sides too and that are tall enough that this 
just presses down hard enough that it holds in place. So it's all locked in place, ready to go. Okay, as you can see, it's all done. What I'll do now is remove it and you can compare it against what we designed. Here's the finished project. You can see it looks pretty good. Um, there's it's a little darker than I thought it would be, but it's got uh, polyurethane on it and it's a gloss, so it needs several more coats. But it still turned out pretty good. It looks like the knot above doesn't really look like the moon, but it still came out pretty good. It's a beautiful piece of wood and it's a diagonal cut. So that's the kind of stuff you can get when you start cutting um, the logs. It was a little hard to put the keyhole slot in the back. That I'm going to have to work on a technique to do that. I think flipping it over and doing it with a CNC is probably going to be the best way to do it. So take care. Have fun. Good day.